there is no La Homene at the beginning. No. The only one La Homene, only one Homene existing in Brogni was Homene Sevon. Mm -hmm. And the name, real name of Homene begins to be used in Brogni in the, 60, in the 60, uh, 17th century, early 17th century. Uh, what is now Homene Conti was called at that time Cro des Clous and becomes Romane at that time. And it becomes Romane, but a few vineyards around that became, uh, have been called Romane at the same time, including part of the, the actual Romane we still have now. Um, we, we own La Romane since, as a monopoly since 18, 1826, and it's my ancestor, General Isabella, that between 1850 and 1926, bought all these small vineyards all together to recreate what is now La Romane. It has never been La Romane before because probably it was one sole parcel that was cut in different um, parts uh, on the 15th century and you created that under the name of, of La Romane but some of the parcels that we bought at that time were already known, named as La Romane uh, since the 17th century. That, that's the real origin of, of La Romane we see that now. Yeah. But the, the, the General Comte Ligebeler, my ancestor, on the 7th generation, um, between 1815 and 1926, that's, I think you remember well, it's seven different plots uh, that all together make La Romane uh, as we have now. It's a monopoly since 1826. And seeing that, we, we, we have these vineyards and keep it whatever the evolution on the waves of the family. We have kept um, this vineyard for all that time. And we are f or farming that or being in charge of that for about two centuries now. Yeah. That's, uh, Long story, a short story regarding what Brogni is, but it's about two centuries. Yeah. I think La Romane is really a Grand Cru among the Grand Cru. Um, when you are talking about Renio, it's interesting because there is, as you say, um, just a line or a line or, or a wall between La Romane and on, on, on Renio. There's a promic at the top. Um, when you have a, a wall in Brogni, it's usually because the soil is changing. You're on, you're on small fault and you, are, you can put your wall. On, on stone, on here we have just a small fissure on the soil, and we have a bit more finer soil on Romane, on, on, on Regno, and a bit more deeper on La Romane. Deeper means mean that probably 20 or 30 centimeters more of, of mix of clay and limestone, but it's for, for roots or vineyards, it's a lot. Then <coughs> when you are on the, on the, on the Regno, you have very poor soils, probably the top soil is about something like 30 centimeters, one feet, of clay and limestone, and, and then you have big blocks of limestone which for sure, with fissure on it, and the roots go through the fissures, but there is nothing to eat and to drink on that, on that uh, stone. For La Romane, it's slightly deeper, it's much more, probably 80 centimeters, something at 2.5 feet deep of mix of clay and limestone, and then you have this first smaller um, uh, limestone, and then bigger blocks. But then the roots can go slightly deeper on first finding energy also on the, on the clay and slightly more, a bit more water on the summer and going deeper and finding this tension, this texture of, 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 the, of, the, of the limestone. When you are going slightly down on Romane Conti, you have a slightly more deeper soil because you have a bit more clay on limestone. The soil is probably much more three or four feet, one, one minute, 1.3 meters of clay and limestone, and then you have the limestone. There is these tiny differences that are making this huge, or oh, huge differences, that are making the differences on the wine, and it's much more. That is part of the, the answer. The other part of the answer is um, La Romane is the only one vineyard that is planted north to south, where all the other vineyards are planted east to west on the, on the side of the slope. Um, that is giving also a slightly different ripeness, a different uh, iteration, because when you have the rows planted like that, and the sun goes th that way, every single row makes shadow to the next one. That means that the grapes never see directly the sun. It's only the, the, the leaves that see the sun, but after, on the, at the level of the grapes, you have shadow from the next um, um, uh, row. You haven't that on the row that you have like that, or the sun is going like that, because the, row, the, 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 the grapes can see the, the, the sun all the time. It's also giving this something different that you have in La Romane. It's all, when we are talking in Burgundy about terroir or climat, what the terroir is, the terroir is a combination of the soil, the subsoil, 
we can play with because we are plowing and we are trying to push our roots to go deep. But that is part of the climate, of the, of the, of the terroir. Other part of the terroir is the climate, the real climate, I mean, the, where we can play with. Um, other parts of the, of, the, of the terroir is the plant, the spinel noir. We have cho chosen in Burgundy to have the spinel noir for centuries and we keep it. And after you have much, much, much slightly more finer or slightly more deeper pinot, but it's generally speaking the same family. After you have the man, I'm part of the terroir. As, as a conductor is part of a symphony, I'm just here to be sure that everything goes well. That's it. And we're much more on the idea of producer than conductor in music. And the next, the next part of the terroir, it's pretty brand new on my definition of what the terroir is, is history. History is part also of the terroir. I mean, that history of the land, history of the vineyards, history of whatever has, been, has happened here, what happened in the, in the previous generation, have also an influence on the wine, but also history, the history of where you are, the vineyards on the, the, the town when you are. When you grew up in Nuit Saint-Georges or when you grew up in Vaudreuil-Malais, you will make different wines because your, your taste, your palate have been educated by different wines. And you produce after what you have tasted and what you enjoy with. That's why, by example, also, between Nuit Saint-Georges and Vaudreuil-Malais, there's only what, two kilometers, 1.5 miles, no more, you have so different wines. Because the soil is slightly the same, the, the terroir, the, the, the climate is about the same, the plant is about the same, but the history of the vineyards and the history of the man are not the same ones. And it's making also different wines. Because we grew the grapes, but also we transformed them into wine. And we have, we have a lot of influence on the, on the grape as well. A bit too much, I think. Sometimes. see any difficulties when you have to do something and um, we love to be on this vineyard. It's probably harsher, harder to walk on Reno, but it's really sloppy and when you are going to the bottom to the top of the slope, when you are at the top, you are happy to be at the slope. Here yeah, because as, as I said, the, 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 the rules are north to south. You don't go up to the hill, you are all the time on the same, on the same uh, level of the hill. Um, it's helping a lot. You are all the time slightly a bit um, uh, in, in this kind of thing, that it's not easy for that. But after it, just being in this middle of the wine world is helping a lot, and you enjoy it with. Um, you all the time say, oh, why this field is different from the other? But you spend much more time than enjoying yourself being there than to say, oh, the row is too long, and I have to finish that before, before tomorrow. Then uh, on the neighborhood is good as well. I mean, that you have a good you have a good waves on this area, I think. It's easy to make Laramay, in fact. I have to admit that uh, it's probably one of the easiest ones to do because everything is going well. Um, you never have any question, have any question that has never any problems, never fermenting problems. Everything goes really well. Um, after the texture is all the time it's all the time a big wine or a small wine. I mean, that um, it's not showing you wine, big wine. But you have all the time this vibrancy, this delicatesse, this elegance in the wine that you don't have for the other wines. Renio, by example, that, uh, that is at the top of La Romane, is all the time a bit more, have a bit more shoulder, give a bit more power. Uh, even it's work in the same way, it's the same, the same yields. 
uh, the same wine making process, the same wine growing process, but you have all the time big, slightly bigger wines. And say, oh, why is so different? Because it's very close on the on the on the vineyard. Then I quite often compare um, 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 Grand Cru to, into music. Um, 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 La Romaine is this, this very ample symphony, and it's much more probably uh, Beethoven than Mozart, mm -hmm. because you have this something deeper. Um, I can compare also that all, all with with Sibelius, talking a bit more for you uh, as well, because Sibelius has this, and it's closed for us, um, has this depth and this dramatic uh, um, taste on your on your on your. When yeah, you can hear that, and I really love that. Because it's Mozart is, I think, too easy sometimes. Uh, Beethoven, Sibelius, as this, you have to go a bit slightly deeper into the, the music to understand everything. And when you hear that for a second, third time, you say, wow, I understand that it's not easy music. Um, you need to go really deeper into the, 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 uh, the um, uh, opera to, to see what's going on. And the harmony is a bit like that. So you have these depths, this weight as well. But there's no way that you don't feel, but you have this weight and that's giving this power. Um, and I think we are, it's pretty like that for, for our money. It's, it's all the time my, my position or my idea about wine making and what the wine is. Um, and I learned that with a very well known winemaker that helps me a lot, not about how to do wine, because there is no cooking recipe. But how to do some, how to make wine. It was Henri Jaillet, it was a close friend of my father. And this man just gave me some lights. And one of the lights, that is, I think, one of the most more important lights, two, maybe two of them. So first, a wine has to be good from the vet. If it's too tannic on the vet, it will be too tannic after. If the tannins are dry, they will be dry in the future. There is no sun into a, a glass of wine, then if they are not ripe, that will be right after. Only said also to me, um, because I asked him why these wines in the early 2000s in Burgundy were very big, people are making very big on dark Pinot and you know, didn't enjoy with. And he said to me, oh, first you have to make wine that you love because if you can drink them, if you can sell them, sorry, you can drink them. Um, I think it's really singing in that way. How many won't be better in 50 years? It will be different for sure. Um, if you love young wine, enjoy it with now because it's not a shame to open them. And I have a few friends that say, okay, we want to open them early. Okay, you can do that. You will have different pleasure in 10 years, probably much more pleasure if you love a bit more achieved wines in 20 years. But if you really don't want to open them, okay, wait for three or four years after the, bot the bottling because all the ones are this bit, we call that bottling disease and they are a bit more shy at the beginning. Um, but after, you can open them and enjoy with them. It would just be a different pleasure if you open them in three years or in 20 years. But it's not a shame to open them on both sides.